a single sample hypothesis test for the population variance. This is the formula for the test statistic. It's in the formula book on page 12. N is the sample size and uh, it has to be a random sample. S squared is the sample variance so it's either given or they give you data so you can work it out using option 4 from your calculator and then squaring that or you may use the formula for S squared which is in the formula book on page 12. Sigma squared is the value that we test and it's the value that you write down in H0 and H1. The population that the data is taken from is assumed to be normal. And we always test a variance and not a standard deviation. So if a standard deviation is given, square the value to get the variance and then carry on with the test using the variance. Example 1, a sample of 12 values, so n is 12, has a sample variance of 8.45. We're assuming that the data is normally distributed, so that condition is met. Uh, we have to assume that the sample is random, otherwise the hypothesis test would be invalid. We're going to use a 5% significance level, and it's a one-tailed test. We're testing to see if the variance is less than 15. So H0 and H1. N minus 1 is 11. 11 degrees of freedom. So in our sketch, because we're testing for less than, it's the lower tail on the left-hand side of the chi-squared distribution. 5% significance level, so the critical region has 5%, so 95% on the other side. going to the chi-squared tables, looking up 5% with 11 degrees of freedom. Here's the critical value, 4.575. Applying the formula, so n minus 1 is 12 minus 1, 11. S squared, 8.45. Sigma squared, 15. Our test value is 6.20. 6.20 is greater than 4.575. We're in the except H0 region. So our conclusion is since 6.20 is greater than 4.575, we accept H0 and conclude that there is insufficient evidence to say that the variance is less than 15. Example 2, a standard deviation is given, so we're not going to work with this value, we're going to square it to get the variance. So the variance is 9. The machine goes wrong if the standard deviation increases. So we're working with a one-tail test, and H0 is sigma squared equals 9. H1, sigma squared is greater than 9 n is 10. A sample is given. The data goes into the calculator. Option 4 for the sample standard deviation. We're doing our test in terms of variances, so we're going to square this. So S squared is 30.23. So H0, H1, in terms of the variance. We're looking for an increase. So it's a one-tail test. It's the upper tail on the right-hand side of the chi-squared distribution. Here's our S squared value. And this condition's met that the population is assumed to be normal. So the critical region is on the right-hand side. 
because h1 says the variance is greater than the arrows pointing to the right so the critical region is on the right we look up 99 percent from the chi-squared tables with nine degrees of freedom here's our critical value we put the values into the test statistic formula which is on page 12 of the AQA formula book our test statistic is 30.2 30.2 is greater than 21.666 so we're going to reject H0 so there is sufficient evidence to say that the standard deviation is greater than 3 so the process is going wrong Example 3, we have a sample of size 15 taken from a normal distribution, so that condition is met. We're using a 5% significance level and we're testing to see whether the standard deviation is 65. So we're going to do the test in terms of uh, the variance but H0 and H1 can be written in terms of the standard deviation. And it's a two-tailed test because either the standard deviation is 65 or it could be less or it could be more. So H0 and H1, a two-tailed test. S squared calculated from this value and using this formula which is on page 12 of the AQA formula book gives us 74.26 and because this is a two-tailed test we have to split the significance level like this so we have two and a half percent in the lower tail two and a half in the upper tail that's the five percent split 95 in the center so to get the two critical values to get the one here, we look up 2.5% from the tables. For this one, the cumulative probability to the left of this line is 97.5%. So from the tables, we have the lower critical value and the upper critical value. we calculate our test statistic remember this value here is a variance and we had a standard deviation of 65 so taking the value from H0 there and squaring it to get the variance so our test value is 0 0.246 which is less than 5.629 so we're going to reject H0. There is sufficient evidence to say that the standard deviation is not 65. So the conclusion here is in terms of the standard deviation, which is what we were testing to begin with. So H0 and H1 can be written in terms of a standard deviation, if that's what you're testing, or a variance, if that's what you're testing. But the actual test so this formula, the test statistic, is all in terms of a variance. So this must be a variance and not the standard deviation. And then the final conclusion is in terms of whatever you're testing for, whether it's standard deviation or variance. To do the hypothesis test, we've made use of the sample variance and the population variance. So we have both of these values. And we either accept H0 or we reject H0. If we've accepted H0, we're saying that this value is true, it's correct, we found evidence for it. So we can use this value for any subsequent calculations. We go with this. And we're not going to use the S squared value anymore for any further calculations that we do. 
If on the other hand we've rejected H0, then we've rejected this value. So we can't use that for any further calculations, in which case we're going to use S squared wherever we need to use a variance. The next example will make use of this. Example 4. In part A, we're going to test the standard deviation. Here's the data that we're going to use. We're using a 5% significance level. We're looking for a reduction. Because we're testing for a standard deviation, we're going to use our value of 3.4 in H0 and H1. The sample variance is 1.759 from this data, directly from the calculator. We're looking for a reduction, so the arrow points to the left the critical region is on the left, it's a one-tail test. The chi-squared tables give us a critical value of 2.167. N is equal to 8, so there are 8 minus 1, 7 degrees of freedom. Using the formula, we have a test statistic of 1.87. Our test value, 1.87, is less than 2.167, so we reject H0. There is sufficient evidence to say that the standard deviation of the journey times is less than 5.4 minutes. So we have rejected H0. This value has been rejected which means for any subsequent calculations we're going to use the sample value. The sample variance is 1.759 so its standard deviation will be the square root of that. That's the value that we are to use for any subsequent calculations because we have just shown that there is evidence that we should reject this value. So we're going down this path. We rejected H0 so we've rejected that value, we're now going to use this. Part B, we're going to test the mean journey time and the mean is 20.3 minutes uh, using the same sample. So to test the population mean on this side we use a t-test. On this side, we use a z-test, the normal distribution test. So testing to see whether there has been a reduction in the mean journey time, so a one-tail test, we have this calculation. And the test statistic, minus 4.5, is less than minus 1.895, so we're going to reject H0.